because you mentioned him before, and I, and I will ask this, uh, and I will tee up with the um, dark side of the ring that you appeared on recently. Yes, it was the Dynamite Kid thing, but I'm not going to ask about Dynamite. But you made mention that um, you, you had connections with the, uh, the with the Montreal Mafia as a way to like it was it a way to stop reprisals, basically? But um, uh, my actual question is. Uh, with Dino Bravo, was it ever mentioned or hinted that he had any connection to the Mafia or he was running against them or anything like that? I need to correct you right away, Oh, James. I'm sorry, please. No, it's okay, please. Uh, I never mentioned to anybody I had contacts with the Mafia. Never. So if you heard that, you didn't hear it from me. You heard it from hearsay. The thing that I always said was that I didn't realize is when a Dino... He was a companion of us. He was caught up in this middle of the story there where I'm not going to get into the whole story, but Dino Bravo's uncle was Vic Catroni, the Catroni family up in Quebec. They were the top mafias in the Italian mafias in Quebec. Mm. And because Dino, I used Dino at the Madison Square Garden at that last night um, after, uh, after I did my comeback on Dynamite. I went to see uh, uh, Dino. Actually, came to see us in the dressing room, and the next night of the event of the incident where I, where I hit the dynamite, and nobody else wanted to talk to us. And all the dressing rooms were full except the one that we were in. Raymond and I it was empty. It was just me and Raymond. And Dino walked in that night, and Dino came in and he said, uh, "He said, guys, says I got good news and I got bad news." He says, "Which one do you want to have first?" And I didn't want to speak to Dino because early that day before I did my comeback, the, the day before that. I said hello to Dino and he never answered me. He was sitting with the Bulldogs right between both of them when I came in. So he sided with them, which I don't blame him because I'm not a fighter. And I'm sure Dino thought, well, Jacques is going to quit the business for sure after the beating he got and all that. So everybody thought I was going to do that. So he sided with them. So, so when he came to tell us in the good news and the bad news the night after the, the incident, I just walked away. I went to the dressing room. But, uh, but then Raymond asked him, he says, he, he, well, OK, what's the good news? He says, well, the Bulldogs, they gave their notice. They're finishing in two weeks. And uh, and then I was so happy. I was in the dressing, like in the bathroom, close to the bathroom. I heard Dino say that. I was so happy because I was so tired. Of, I was so beat up mentally for all this thing that I went through and the intimidation, the bullying and all that stuff. And what I had to do to defend myself, it was a horrible thing in my life. Horrible. And so when they said he, they would quit in two weeks, I was so happy. I was relieved. I was saying, finally, the bullying's going to stop and everything's going to stop. So then Raymond asked Dino. He said, well, what's the bad news? So then Dino just looked at Raymond again and he says, well, the Bulldogs gave their notice and they're finishing in two weeks. He repeated the same thing he said about the good news. So then I said to myself, I start thinking. And then I said to myself, holy shit, that means he's going to kick my ass before he leaves. I'm not going to lose He's not going to lose his reputation of being a tough guy and the bully of the dressing room because of a little French Canadian, me, you know? So, so that's why the good news, it was good that he quit in two weeks, but the bad news was that he's going to get back to me before he leaves. And it's, it was so horrible. So, so when that happened, you'll understand now. I went to see Dino Bravo after that, when he gave the good news, bad news, I was in the dressing room and I don't know where really fast. I don't know where it came from. But I went to see Dino, and, and, and actually it was the night after that, the day after, because I thought of what Dino said, and I was worried. I was really health and then not finishing in a wheelchair, you know, because I got beat up or something like that. So I was really concerned about that. So I went the next night, and I took a piece of paper, and I wrote on a piece of paper a name of a guy, but it was a fictive name. It wasn't a real name. I put a number down. And I went to see Dino. And since Dino had double-crossed me, he well, he just changed camp. I knew he was going to bring everything back to them. So I went to see Dino. And the first time I talked to him in a couple of days since the event, since he, he didn't want to talk to me that day, I didn't. after that, I was like, okay. So I went to see him. And I used him. I used Dino Bravo. And I went to see him. And I told, showed him that piece of paper with the number. And I said, Dino, I'm just going to tell you this. I want you to give a message. To them, if ever you see this number here, and I said, you see the name of this guy here? I have to call him every night now for the next two weeks because they gave their notice for two weeks. So the next two weeks, I'm in danger. So I, I, I called this guy up 
and I got to call him every night after every show. And if one night I don't call him, one night in the next two weeks, he's flying to Calgary and he's going to meet them in Calgary when they get back. So that was made. And Dino turned around and he stooged exactly what I want him to do. And he went to see Dynamite. And that caused a lot of confusion to Dynamite because he had to worry about his family. He had to worry about him. He thought the threat was even to his kids and family, which never was. I never threatened anybody. I just put that thing in front of Dino to use it to save my ass, to save my life. That's the only reason why I did that. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah, James? absolutely.